Hey guys, today I want to talk to you about hacking the scalp carrier. It's really popular right now, so I put together a couple graphics to explain how to do that. Uh, so sit tight and here we go. Hey guys, so today we're talking about making a replica of the Scout Carrier with so two patterns um, with one notable difference. So you'll see that the Scout is a two-piece um, panel construction. It has like a separate waistband. Um, for this hack, we're not going to do that, mainly because I, I don't know that it's worth the effort to make it a separate waistband piece when the Voyager panel molds so well anyway. Um, and without darts even so um, if you were wondering if you needed to do the darts um, I included a picture of this Voyager here for you to look at um, and see that it's really not necessary and it's going to save you a lot of time during construction um, to just do it this way too um, so you'll need the Voyager pattern and either the evolution ideally or the little pick me up we're going to be using the Voyager's panel and the straps from the evolution or if you are larger framed or have a longer torso you might want to use the little pick-me-up straps so as you're reviewing this graphic here to see what you need to make this mashup what I did not mention on the graphic was that the ladder locks need to be one inch and they also need to be single adjust um, and then for the webbing segments those should be one inch webbing that is six inches long you'll need two of those if you want to do the sternum strap uh, like the carrier then what you need is uh, metal snaps if you want that look you'll need two one inch o-rings and then you'll need some fabric left over to make these um, fabric strips so as you create these fabric strips for the um, sternum strap guide it, really what we're aiming for is somewhere between one to one and a half inches in width that's up to you whether you like the the thicker look against the underside of the strap or not um, but once you sew those we're just tacking them to the underside of each strap before we sew the straps together um, and then tacking them down at regular intervals um, again that's at your discretion whatever you feel like your fingers can get underneath and be able to attach the actual sternum strap components um, so that's that's up to you um, for the actual sternum strap pieces we need to go with a one inch one inch width excuse me um, and then we're gonna thread our one inch o-rings on so the shorter end will have the o-rings and the longer end will come across the chest and attach to the o-rings um, but again one inches for those and then the exact length that's kind of up to you but I would follow loosely follow the Voyager pattern for those to sew the straps, use the pattern pieces from either the Evolution or Little Pick-Me-Up to construct the straps. Um, the Scout has a low profile, lightly padded strap, um, so the foam you use is at your discretion, but if you choose to use something like layered fleece or quilt padding, it would be smart to sew that in while you're sewing the straps instead of trying to insert it later, um, and we, we know that could be super frustrating. Um, if you're going with open or closed cell foam, you'll insert the foam after sewing and turning the straps um, as usual. Um, what I would use, uh, I would probably go with, if I was making this, I would probably go with a half inch open cell foam combined with a thin layer of um, closed cell foam. So you get um, the rigidity, but you also get a little bit of cushion. Um, and if I was going to put those in together, I would probably use a spray adhesive um, to insert them together. Attaching the strap hardware to the strap is actually pretty straightforward, um, but you'll notice that we are using one inch single adjust um, tension locks instead of dual adjust like the Voyager pattern calls for. Um, basically what we're doing here, we're just taking those six inch webbing segments um, threading them through the tension lock and then attaching them to the strap, making sure that we are adequately reinforcing. To create the ring strap holder, we're sewing two pieces of fabric together down the long sides. Um, and then once we turn them, we can top stitch, um, fold that piece in half and then thread the rings on. Um, and that's, that's pretty much it. For the waist strap, um, the the approximate dimensions are 8 inches by 40 with a, the tapered hem at the end. Um, it's flexible. You can make this, you know, 14 inches wide if you want a thicker strap. You can, you know, keep it at 8. 
Um, and again, the length is completely up to you. If you wanted to have a really long tail, that's fine. Um, you can go longer. Um, I think 40 is going to be more than adequate for most everyone. Um, some, some of you who are really thin may even want to shorten it a little bit so you don't have such a long tail. Okay, so construction from here is pretty straightforward. We're just substituting the components that we just made with that respective component in the pattern. So, for example, at the bottom of the panel, when you'd be adding the webbing, instead of adding webbing, we're going to be adding those fabric rings and the wrap strap. Um, so, yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Don't forget to subscribe and share your mashups in So2 Patterns Group on Facebook. Thanks for watching.